Hello, I'm Rod Lawton and this is a video about DxO Photolab 7. What it is, how it works and who might want to use it. DxO is well known for its raw processing, denoising and lens correction processes. And these are all combined with powerful local adjustments and image enhancement tools to get the best possible results from your raw files. A photo lab can work on JPEG and TIFF images too, of course. Let's start with the photo library panel. This is one of the two key workspaces in Photolab 7. Here you can browse your image folders and select the images you want to edit. When you double click on an image, it opens in the customizer workspace where all the editing tools are. Let's stick with the photo library for a moment. Down at the bottom of the folder list, you'll see a panel called Projects. Projects in Photolab are basically like albums or collections. They're like virtual containers for bringing together related images without actually having to move them on your hard disk. You can create as many projects as you like, and a photo can be in as many different projects as you like. You can even nest projects within project groups to create a deeper and more sophisticated organizational system. Before we finish with the photo library panel, there's one more thing. Right at the top, you'll see a search box. You can use this to search for images with particular properties, like the camera used or the ISO setting. As you type, Photolab will try to match what you're typing with the image properties available. And just be aware that this does search all the images you've browsed, not just those in the currently selected folder. Right, so now let's take a look at the customize panel where all the editing work goes on. Here we've got a sidebar on the left which is mostly informational and the sidebar on the right where all the editing tools are. So right from the start, Photolab 7 will automatically apply DxO's lens correction profiles, so you don't need to worry about that. In fact, you might not need to do anything at all if your image looks good as it is. But if you do want to make some changes, here's how to do it. First, you can adjust the overall exposure with the light tab. This will display a set of panels for adjusting exposure settings for your photos and there's an exposure panel right at the top. Every panel has a toggle switch to switch it on and off. There's a lot more going on under the hood with Photolab's smart lighting tools, but let's keep that for another time. So now let's look at the local adjustments for fixing specific areas of a photo. You'll find local adjustments in a tab at the far right of the tool sidebar. Local adjustments come in a few different types. One of these is control points, a DxO speciality inherited from Nick software when DxO took over the Nick collection. Control points are very clever because they target the tones and colors you clicked on. It's like having the software create an adjustment mask automatically. When you add a control point, you adjust the image in those areas using the sliders in the sidebar. And when you move the control point around, the target area changes and the adjustment changes according to where you position the center of the point. DxO has added what it calls control lines to its local adjustments. The easiest way to think of these is as graduated filters, but with an eyedropper to pick out the tones and colors you want the graduated filter to adjust. There's one more thing I want to show you. This is Photolab's Deep Prime and Deep Prime XD High ISO Noise Reduction. You'll find these options on the Detail tab. Photolab applies its regular high quality noise reduction by default, but the Deep Prime and especially the Deep Prime XD options are in another league. However, because of the processing required, you can't see the effect previewed on the full image. Instead, you have to make do with a small magnified section in the panel. Deep Prime processing is only applied fully when you export an image, but if you compare the new version with the default rendering, you'll see just how spectacularly effective DxO's Deep Prime processing is. So now, what if you want to try out different things with your photos without committing yourself to any of them? You can create virtual copies of a photo, I just right click on its thumbnail, to try out different adjustments without creating new files. This is a chance to try out Photolab's preset effects to get some inspiration via the button in the top right corner of the window. There's a lot to talk about with Photolab 7's adjustment tools, local adjustments and virtual copies. But let's leave it there for now. The key question is, what do you do with your photos when you've made all these changes? 
The answer is that Photolab 7 is a non-destructive editor. All the changes you make to your photos can be removed or modified at any time, but they don't actually become permanent until you export a new version of your photo. And there's a button for this. When you're in the customizer workspace, look for the film strip panel at the bottom. And if you don't see it, drag up on a little pin at the bottom of the screen to display this panel. Now you should see an export button, which gives you all sorts of options for saving a permanent version of your photo. Remember, until you do this, only Photolab 7 will display the edits you've made. The simplest option here is to export a JPEG version of the image you've edited to the current image folder and at an image quality setting you specify. I'd recommend 90%. So, there is a lot more to DxO Photolab 7 than I've had time to explain here, but this video should at least have given you an idea about what Photolab is, what it does, and how you might use it. So that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.